talk about some testing? Yeah. Because not that, this isn't, not that this isn't fun, but I just feel like testing was a lot of fun this week. Um, well, did you watch any? Well, How I did. Do you know? Well, this is what I this is these are the things that I picked up on. Um, and some of them is fairly obvious, but anyway. Number one, Red Bull look ominous. And number two, Ferrari um quietly confident about, but I feel like they've kept their powder dry. Mercedes look in a much stronger position than they did last year. I wouldn't say that they're at the level of Red Bull, but it wouldn't surprise me if by four or five races in, they're there. Just like they had a few issues on the first day, but they look good. Not like they look good. Um, they don't have a they don't have a porpoising issue that they're going to have to wait like sort of fix up for yeah. half a year. They can they can develop yeah. the car rather than just redesign it. And I think as a as a fan of the sport, one thing that I love to see from um, the three biggest or the three strongest teams right now in this new formula is that each one of them has a different aero philosophy. So they are all extremely different cars. How Mercedes, like, I'm, ex- I'm happy that they did, but how they continued to run with that side pod design this year and kind of even go further and more dramatic with it. Do you think, that's, do you think it's a pride thing? Yeah, but I also think that they are smart people and it's great. Like, it's amazing. Um, you know, you read a set of rules and everybody's going to interpret them differently. And it's beautiful to see how, like, those three teams, there is pride. They're not going to copy each other because they want to do it their way. Um, but it's it's beautiful to see them, like, all have totally different philosophies and really achieve, you know, within a quarter of a second of each other. That's so cool. How cool are people? You know what I mean? I think we've got uh, the coolest case study. I want to hear about this one, what you guys think. I think we've got... A year where we could have the coolest case study we've probably had in a long time because you've got Aston Martin who have got, it seems, the pace to challenge the top three. Um, and some are saying pace better than Mercedes, running a Mercedes engine, Mercedes drivetrain, Mercedes gearbox with, with a, a Red car Bull that looks car. eerily similar to a Red Bull design philosophy. Mm. So like I got, feel I feel that the top three were sandbagging a little bit though. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm 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 just saying like it, it would from from what and I'm no expert because I I'm not even uh, I'm not even close. But from what the experts are saying, looking at the um the race runs that each driver did, and judging that of just pure race pace, obviously it's not a perfect race, but just run, running, watching the tyre strategy the whole run, it would be Red Bull first, second, and Aston Martin ahead of the, the Ferraris in terms of just their pure runs. I yeah, they could have filled the tanks. I would, I, I, I would... Well, I'm, I'm not saying you are, but I'm also saying you're not an expert, but I'm saying that what the experts are saying is that from the just from the pure race runs, it is the Aston Martin has made massive gains. Mm. It has been on the Listen, protein I, 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 yeah. all off season. Yeah. Well, you know, we were talking today, Harry and I, and he kind of said, and we'll talk about this a bit later on. Um, but he said, you know, what are going to be some of your dark horse predictions for the season, right? Um, and based on what I saw in testing from Aston Martin, I think honestly that Fernando Alonso is going to win a race this year. Imagine the scenes. Fernando Alonso is going to win a race. He's going to get a wet race or he's going to get a race where there's chaos up front. It's always going to happen. And he's going to be there to pick up the pieces because he's going to be Monaco. the best of the rest. Pardon? 50 bucks, it's Monaco. It could be Monaco. I don't know, mate. It could be Azerbaijan. It could be um, Vegas. I don't know. He uh, did say, he did say that Lance Stroll's a potential world champion. So maybe, uh, yeah. maybe Lance oh, Stroll. Will, uh, I'll will tell you this. Are... One thing that I saw in testing is that if Lance Stroll doesn't pick up his game, Felipe Drugovic is going to be driving that car by the end of the year because he looked very comfortable no, not. in that car. No, no when your dad not. owns the team, I 
it, there's a bit of sarcasm in that, but he uh, looks you know, very I, comfortable in that car. I do think that the performance that Dragovic put on this um, this preseason has probably limited Danny Rick's job to the sidelines forever. Because mm. when you see the performance that he put in, he didn't put a foot wrong. And if you and can Sergeant have, and Piastri. I, I haven't got to that yet, but I'm saying oh, just sorry. like when you when you look at Dra- Dragovic as a whole, you're gonna be commanding a much smaller salary than $18 million a season minimum. And you and you know, he he did the job above and beyond, I think, what anyone really expected. Like that was I, I was quite impressed to be honest. Any any um like negative surprises? McLaren. McLaren. I don't know if there I mean, was a surprise based on their rhetoric after the launch, to be honest with you. But did you did yeah, you, but did you expect to see the, the exact problems that they had last year no, carry over like, this year? I mean the same thing I said to you on the chat a couple of days ago. Like, yes, I'm underwhelmed, right? Underwhelmed, yes, definitely, based on what we expect from them recently. Um, but like I was saying, if any team gets 100 laps of testing a day and is able to accumulate 300 laps over three days, while it might be alarming based on some of the issues we saw with the car, I'm not like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. You know what I mean? Like they've still got 100 the difference, laps. The difference is 100 laps every day is the norm, but usually they have four days. So they're usually getting about 400 plus laps. So but I'm still saying still, 100 laps still a 100 day. Laps, you're still 100 laps short of the norm. No, because, a, because the, top team did four, the top team did 450. Most teams did 380 or something like that. So they're, listen, they're down, but it's not like, I think, I it's think not like, like they're McLaren. in a position where they will not be able to, like they will not, they're not in a position where they need to spend a lot of next week testing. No, I, um, I don't. I don't think that. But what I'm saying is, like, when you look at a team like Red Bull, who comes out and looks on the pace straight away, if they did 320 laps, you'd be like, you know what? They're just happy with everything they've got. They've done their but, shakedowns. They've got the pace. When a team like McLaren, that is still some reason lacking front end, it's lacking. Um, it's apparently very twitchy in the corners still. You would probably want to try and run like more laps to try and mitigate, sort of work out. Exactly where the problem and with I know you think the greatest of class. respect with the greatest of respect. No, you don't have right? respect, but there's an element of quantity over quality because, for example, Williams ran 390 laps, 400 oh. and something laps. Okay, you so you pr- even better. So they ran plus 400 laps, and yet the experts are still saying, based on the eye test, that they are the weakest car. But no so- one's expecting them not to be the weakest car. Like they, they still, they're, they're Williams. We're not expecting them to be any better, but at least they ran through the whole test. They had no problems. They pumped out a lot of laps. They gave a lot of laps to their rookie. Like, that's what you want to do. Yeah, but he might my, have just been running laps. My concern, besides all that, my concern is that McLaren haven't fixed, well, don't seem to have fixed the issues from last year. Um, that's the major concern, I think, more than anything. Like we we know that they were horrible in Bahrain, but you'd think that they'd come with a package that would improve their performance in Bahrain. And I don't understand what they've been doing for the past year. If they can't get on top of, if Mercedes can fix the porpoising issue with a car with no side pods, why can't McLaren improve front end? McLaren will be a better car because the base car that they have right now is also very much derived. from I don't, the Red I don't Bull. think that them being better is going to help them because I think everyone else has gotten so much better. Yeah, but they could they could get like ten percent um, better and they will still be shit. Can I finish? Can I finish? Three weeks okay, ago, three weeks ago, they came out and said that they are not in a position where the things they've got in the pipeline that was supposed to be ready for this test are ready. So I'm assuming that a lot of what they have, a lot of what they're working with, is not. Um, ideally what they wanted to go racing with in round one. So given Do you not find rounds, that concerning though? Um, yes, I find it concerning, but at the same time, we knew that this, this has been an issue, like this is always an issue with McLaren because they don't have a wind tunnel. Uh, and we're not going to see... Not any- a, 
that is not a reason for them being this far behind. Are you it serious is. right now? It is. A, it is a reason. It's a very real reason. Um, and that will be ready. I think they're saying in two months. So for next year, it's going to be not an issue. It's somewhat concerning. I will say that. But the first three races of the year is normally when you get most of the anomalies. Anyway, you have more. Um, you know, you have a greater lack. Uh, what's what I'm trying to say? greater reliability issues at this time in the year, if they're just able to maximize the next three races, kind of stay in their lane, get some fortune with other teams having issues, that kind of thing, you know, and just kind of stay with the pack. Then by the time they get this update that they're talking about, if it works and if it correlates, then it might not work. They don't have a wind tunnel. Then I think they're going to be okay. To be honest with you, I, I think they'll be okay. Um, I think they finish six this year. I think we're I being think too dramatic hard. because but like it, they had a year last year where they regressed somewhat, or I wouldn't even say they regressed. I just reckon that Ferrari went back into the place they should have been. Yes, Alpine, they probably should have been more competitive against Alpine. You can say it's the car. You can say it's the competitiveness of both their drivers or lack thereof. You know, we won't go into that today. Um, but I think it's too, way too early in the season to even cast a prediction as to where they're going to finish. I, I um, guess I'm coming from a, from the perspective of Aston is saying, like everyone's saying Aston's quick yeah. already. Yeah. Alpine is going to be quick. Alpine, right they're, the they're saying the same thing about Alpine that they're saying about um, McLaren. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. No, they're yeah, not. Alpine is still a huge unknown. Yeah, but... Okay, if we just if we just break it down, like this is the time to make rash decisions and say stupid things. So if if and I'm just gonna look at it, you know, just purely of of what the experts are saying. You look at Red Bull; they have they've taken a step forward. You look at Ferrari; if anything, they're just behind Red Bull. And you look at McLaren and Mercedes; they're still just behind Ferrari. That hasn't changed from last year. If we're then adding Aston Martin to, if not that at the level of Mercedes, let's say, let's say just behind them. All right. They're not let's, at the level. They're, they're going to be obviously behind them. Half a second. Right, let's, well, let's, not let's, just let's, behind let's, them. They'll be half well, a second. When push comes okay. Let's say they're behind them. That's now four teams. Mm. Right. Yeah. Alpine, Alpine have come out and said, we've hit all our marks in testing. There is this, they, they look to be the twitchiest car, but in terms of lap time and in terms of race runs, they still look like like they haven't. They they're still quicker than last year, um, and they look don't look like they're taking a step back. And apparently, they're running high fuel for like extra high fuel for most of their runs. So if we're now injecting McLaren there, they're automatically one sort of spot back from where they were at the end of last year. And we're not talking about the gains that Sauber look like they've made as well because they look, you know, they had the fastest lap on day two and day three of testing. And they look like a very, you know, competitive car with a good driver lineup as well. Yeah, so, I, I guess so. I'm just saying if McLaren does come with these upgrades, you're saying it, they're saying they haven't got them. The first three races are where they're going to lose out on finishing in the top five. I think if the other two teams capitalize on their... yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, but you know, last year, last year, or you guys, particularly Joseph, in the past, you've said that McLaren McLaren are idiots because they overpromise and then they underachieve, and then this year they're very transparent and say, "Listen, we're not ready yet. We've got some things developed on this car, but it's not what it's not even what we wanted to go testing with." So they're telling you that they're underdeveloped right now, and then that's an issue as well. Um, so anything can happen in the first couple of races. I think if there is a time when you don't need all the upgrades because funny things happen, it's probably now. If there, you've also got to take into consideration you've got a rookie driver anyway. So those races aren't going to be maximized purely based on the learning curve that it takes for them to, or for Piastri to get up to date um, or up to speed. So like as far as... You know, you could also say that Aston Martin, as good as they are, they've got they're probably going to have Drugovic behind the wheel for the next two races, um, so that's going to hinder their ability to capture or maximise points. So, with all of those things being the said, formula, the, the current Formula Two champion, 
Yeah, yeah, but Piastri Piastri is also, you know, F two champion in the most recent season that he's raced there too. And I've just said that he's going to. Well, but if we're talking about a current F two champion, he's in a better car than the. He's also yeah, he's also what? a rookie, and the argument could be made that he was the best driver in F two last year because all the recent competition was gone, and everyone that he was racing against was a rookie in F two. If you wanted to go down those lines, so by default based on his experience in the category, he should have been the champion. Um, but with all that being said, with all of that being said, first couple of races, just be safe. Don't make mistakes. Um, stay out of trouble. Try to, you know, qualify, maximize qualifying. Um, and then we'll go from there. Because one thing about the McLarens, even though they weren't great race cars last year, they were pretty slippery in a straight line during qualifying and under you know, low fuel load. So if they can get themselves to ninth and 10th, I think, um, you know, anything can happen. Um, and Ocon well, and Pierre might just wipe each other out. Hopefully. Um, um, that was a recipe for disaster from the start. But um, I guess I wanted to hear from all of you some predictions for the season. They don't have to be like, I've got a couple that, or one that's a bit outlandish, but... Any any predictions? Can I can I ask a question forward? to Christina to begin with? Tina, who wins the battle between the Ferrari drivers this year, and why? Good question. That is a great question. To be honest with you, I think that don't um, overthink it, mate. Just just shoot, I'm not shoot from the hip. It, but I think that Carlos is like he's an, he's a real underdog. And I don't think that people appreciate his ability enough. Um, Charles doesn't have Bonotto this year. However, he is back with his old Alfa Romeo principal. So I'm not sure. It could still be in Charles's favour in that way. But I would like to think that, look, I would like Charles, I would like Carlos to be the person that wins. Um, but I think that there's still too much hanging on Charles and his, you know, the length of his contract. So I think he still might win out. That's my that's my prediction for that. Very diplomatic response. Um, okay, I just my I just thought something pretty funny as well, just to share with everyone. You you were saying who's your dark horse, and there is actually a dark horse in in Formula One because it's Ferrari. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. <laughs> um, okay, here's my bold prediction, H. Yep. Fernando to win a race. I said that already. Number two, Logan Sargent, two top tens this year. Number three and final bold prediction, Yuki Tsunoda doesn't see out the year. Uh, yeah, I believe that one. Because yeah, if especially if Nick DeVries comes in and if is even if he's purely consistency personified and that's something that he's pretty bloody good at um yeah yuki out especially if red bull end up selling out for tauri well who's racing There's for nothing. red bull in super formula this year Cassidy, Yuri, isn't he who nick cassidy no no what's his name mm, i can't think off the top of my head but i got someone in super formula this year um so, yeah, I don't think he sees it out. Joe, give me something. Give me your bold picks of the season. Yeah, can we post these on the socials as well? Uh, Come on, in, invigorate me, Joe. Invigorate me. I know what I'm going to say. He's going to give you the shits. I think McLaren's going to come eighth in the constructors. Oh, I think eight. Eight. They Mark should purely words. based on that freaking horrible looking car they've got. You guys, you Looks guys better don't realize you, you don't. You guys don't realize you're looking at a person who's watched the downfall of Williams twice, and I've seen the, these these signs. I think I honestly think Zach Brown's in his last year with the team because so I don't think they're getting better. And by default, if they're not getting better, I think he's gone because I think it's a failure. Um, you can look at him laughing. I'm not <laughs> laughing at you. I'm not laughing at uh, you. 
Um, can you share what you're laughing at if you're going to interrupt my bold predictions? No. Okay. Um, I think what you said about Logan Sargent, I'm going to say he's going to beat Alex Albon in the championship this year. No um, way. No chance. Yeah, no uh, way. Not a chance, I think he's Joseph. Got, I think he's got... Um, I think he's got some real dog in him. And I just think that Alex is, I, I'll, dude, if, if Logan can beat Alex in the championship, it means Williams have had a good season. So let's put, hang it on there. And I also think uh, Mercedes is going to beat um, Ferrari in the, in the constructors this year mm. and will get more wins than Ferrari. How many, how many race wins will there be this year that aren't Red Bull? Is it 23 races? Do we get 10? I reckon you yeah. get... This is a good one. How many non-Red Bull races? You get... I reckon Red Bull's going to get 13 wins this year. So 10. I'm going to say eight. Okay. Eight non-Red Bull wins. Eight non-Red Bull wins. Harry, how many? Yeah, eight to 10. No, no, have a number. Have a different number to me so that we can put it on the socials. Well, nine. nine. <laughs> Christina, how many? Be bold. I'm going to go 11. 11. I'm going with 11. I'll go with oh. 11. I like it. Roll the you? dice. Don't think twice. And you know what? I think we'll leave it there because next week when we come back with episode... Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I didn't get my predictions. Oh, Neither did Christina. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What a, what a, what a grub. You're, you're such a jackass. <laughs> Come on, hey, to give us your prediction then. He's tell too me. busy laughing at something on his phone. He needs to get off yeah. his pod. Um, you've probably been waiting to say this all day. <laughs> Did he get some <laughs>